Hello there. From the previous JDBC presentations, you have learned some basics of JDBC. You have also learned the JDBC architecture. You have seen how a Java application can communicate with the database using the JDBC API and the driver which implements this JDBC API. From this presentation, you will learn the various SQL, sorry, the various statements that are available that can be used to execute different SQL statements from within your Java application as well as even invoke the stored procedures from within our Java application. So let's get started with an example. Let's say either you are developing a social networking website or an e-commerce website or even a standalone application. At a minimum, any application you develop does four things. Famously known as current operations. Create, C, for, C stands for create, R for read, update and delete. So at a minimum, when a user comes to your social networking website or any social networking website, he creates a user profile by providing username, password, email, etc. His data gets saved or created. A row gets created in the database tables. Similarly, when he wants to update his information, it gets read back from the database. Then he updates it and then it gets saved back to the database. And then you get bored of a social networking website or you can go delete your profile, that's when everything gets wiped off the database. The SQL, corresponding SQL statements for the current operations are insert, select, update and delete. So you can use these statements to delete data or update data in the database. Now to execute these four statements, DML and DQL statements from within your Java program, we use the statement interfaces that are available in the JDBC API. So you know, in your Java or JDBC application, once you create a connection to the database using the driver manager, you can create the statement object which is the base interface in the java.sql package. You can create a statement object by invoking the create statement method on a connection object. Once you get the statement object, you have two methods on the statement execute update and execute query. The execute update method takes a string of DML. So your insert statements, your database update statements, delete SQL statements go into this method as a string. And it returns an integer value, which is nothing but the number of rows that got affected by this DML statements. So if your update statement updates more than two rows based on your where class, you will get two. Similarly, if you delete statement, deletes more than one row, it gets that number. If it deletes one row, it gets that number. If it doesn't delete anything, it gets a zero back. The execute query allows you to execute or read, execute queries, select queries and read data back. So it takes a DQL statement, data query language statement, which is nothing but your select query and it returns back a result set type of object. A result set is nothing but an object representation of your database table. I will explain result set in detail in another presentation. So that's about the statement object. Any basic SQL can be executed from the using the statement objects methods. One limitation of the statement object is every time a SQL statement is sent to the database, the, C, the database does two things. Compilation of the statement and then preparation of the execution plan for that query. So it's a performance hit to do the compilation every time if we are executing the same SQL statement with different parameters. For example, if we are adding users, let's say if we are adding 10 users and if you execute the same SQL statement 10 times, the database is going to compile them every time, which is unnecessary. We can simply replace the parameters in the SQL statement dynamically and it need not compile them because on the first time, when it compiles it for the first time, it knows that the syntax is right. Now the the only thing that's changing is the values in the query. So that's where the prepared statement comes to the rescue. The prepared statement allows us to pre-compile the SQL statement. So it pre-compiles it the first time the query gets executed. From that point in time, it gives methods that can be used to bind parameters dynamically. So from that point, we only replace the values inside our insert or update or delete statement and it uses the compiled version of the query so that every time that query is not compiled in the database which improves performance. 
The prepared statement also has the execute update and execute query methods. Even before we get there, the prepared statement can be created using the prepare statement method on the connection object. Unlike the create statement, the prepared statement takes the query because it pre-compiles it, right? So we give the query right here and then before we execute update or before we execute query, we bind parameters. Here we give question marks for the parameter values. When we, and I do the hands-on, you will see it in action. For now, remember that the prepared statement gives you setter methods to bind the parameters and you give the query right at the creation of the prepared statement. The last type of statement that is available is the callable statement. So the prepared statement was a child of the statement interface and then the callable statement is a child of the prepared statement. And the callable statement allows us to execute stored procedures that sit in the database from within our Java program. We can create a callable statement by invoking the prepare call method on the connection object and by passing in a string which is nothing but it has a syntax call, comma, the stored proc name and then the inode parameters are represented using question marks. Every stored proc can have in and out parameters and we can bind those in and out parameters using the methods on the callable statement. We register the output parameters and then we set the input parameters. At the end of the execution, the output parameter will have a value. So you will see all that in action when we do the hands-on. And the method of, the only method that is available on the callable statement is the execute method to execute our stored procedure. So from this presentation, you have learned the three different types of statement or interfaces that are available in the JDBC API, which allow you to do the CRUD operations from within your application. And the advantages of prepared statement is that it keeps a pre-compiled version and it should be used, the prepared statement interface should be used if you are executing the same query multiple times within your Java application. And the callable statement should be used to execute stored procedures from within our Java applications. In the next presentation, we will do the hands-on where we will learn how to use the statement, prepared statement, callable statement in each one of them. Until then, keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.